Hello everyone. Oh no, the Frenchies are talking. <laughs> Bear with me one second, guys. Hello everyone, welcome to Server Smash. I'm gonna mute the Frenchies in a second because they're talking because Server Smash has just started. Très très bien. Franchement, merci à tous. J'espère vous êtes amusé aussi. Solved. I do what I do with you every time, Maelstrom. I mute you. Job done. Right, that's him reft and muted Redland. Hello everyone! Welcome to Server Smash! Today we have a very special game for you today. Redland, why don't you say hello and tell us what's happening? Today is Emerald versus Emerald. This has not happened due to not wanting to... But it's happened wars. once before well, they merged, right? Done, we've not done it a second time for fear of instigating a drama bomb that the Reddits would not recover from. But they've decided to go with it this time, and uh, they've really kind of embraced uh, embraced the entire idea. Uh, we'll go into how the teams were chosen and everything like that, but uh, Emerald's really had a lot of fun choosing their teams and, and getting prepped for this. So today we are on Amrish. And uh, we'll show you the Amrish map in um, a few moments. And our teams today, fighting for the new conglomerate, Hoss and Lock bonus. Figure that out for yourself. And for the Vanu Sovereignty, we have Beastern Block Salt Miners. Uh, I love the logos. I really do love the logos. Llamas uh, all round. <laughs> so, I just want to let you know, you won't be able to see it because I'm in an Observer Cam, but I am in an NC Observer Cam, and I am in a max in my NC Observer Cam in solidarity with my Haas and Locke uh, bonus NC. Right, well, um, so yes, we are on NC. What are our numbers today, out of curiosity, Redland? How many have we got fighting today? This is uh, 196 versus 196. Uh, might have might have dropped down to 192 versus 192, and they basically have looked at the uh, the Amorish map and removed one lane from the Amorish map. So this is a, a little bit smaller of a server smash uh, as far as population goes, but they decided to move on to the the new Amorish map that we created in this second season here and just take out the the SNA lane. There is no subterranean nanite analysis lane. Uh, that's completely out of play there, and so it just kind of moves all the battles up to the uh, to the northwest a little bit. Oh, I see, I see. So basically, all right, this this final lane's out of the way, and uh, okay, so it's basically your standard Amrish map as I'm showing on stream with subterranean analysis. All help for the Emerald versus Emerald match. I will be the game referee for this map. And you're muted. Okay, so um. This is kind of cool. So we've got the standard map, so if we go over it very briefly, uh, we have the kind of connection in the west, uh, Soltec going into Deserted Mineshaft, that's usually an isolated lane way off on its own, it's always kind of cool seeing the key uh, Sundra clashes, kind of vehicle clashes and the Air Force going back. In the centre we have the Bastion, it's our large point base, uh, along with Split Peak Pass in the east, those are large bases that are up for contention, neutral bases. In the centre we have Skull Beat Mountain, but you know, you know what that's all about. The Ascent, Lithcorp Central, Rock Slide, Ravens always see some really good tactical play moving around the scent. I really want to see some kind of cave fighting there. And then on the eastern lane, because we don't have subterranean nano analysis, we're going straight into Split Peak Pass, and that is the western base in the uh, center there. Do you think, I mean, what do you think is going to happen today, Red? I mean, do you think um, our maxes from the NC are going to go up from a Calatech plan? Are the salt miners going to go after the ascent? I heard there's salt there. What do you think is going to happen? I think probably this is this is our first taste at what server smash is going to look like after the spawn changes and after the max changes. So we didn't nerf maxes, but we buffed everything that can kill a max, and we added a new gun that can kill maxes very easily. And we went from people complaining about maxes and an overpopulation of them and way too many around to having no maxes on certain servers and, and people uh, killing off all their teammates with so many tank, tank mines being around and a single grenade now kills an entire platoon on, on a point. Uh, I think that's an interesting thing to see here. How much does the changes of how easy maxes are to kill, does that really change server smash? Does it change how maxes are used in server smash? But I think much, much bigger deal is the spawn option changes. Uh, there is now... A Can I ask you a second? Yes. Um, while we're describing this, would you be so kind, because everyone watching today, we do have the Emerald vs. Emerald game, but the French game, French vs. French game, has just ended. And every single one of their players decided to jump into the same channel in TeamSpeak and is causing quite a bit of a bandwidth drain. Uh, so you're, you are breaking up ever so slightly. Would you be so kind as to go tell them not to be in the same channel? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, as uh, Maelstrom was going on about, uh, referring to there, we have had important spawn changes, 600 meters. So, elements such as quick reaction forces and being able to teleport across the map to hard spawns and bases that require uh, assistance. 
that may not be the instance. And as you were saying, Relent, as you're back in the channel now, we may have an instance where... Just turn on TeamSpeak so people can see us. Uh, we may have an instance where Max's play is significantly less of a fang. You think people will use um, AV mines more often, or... How do you think this is gonna... In a server smash setting, do you think Max is, and the way they're used as a kind of a, a crushing force to get to a capture point, is that gonna change? I mean, I'm I'm curious. I think that from a resource perspective, the new rifle, the Archer, is a great way to get rid of maxes that doesn't cause a resource pull. As far as a default slot as a member of your squad, I'm not sure that giving up your main gun for a max killing rifle, and that's about all it can do, let's, let's be fair, is a max killing rifle and maybe take out some aircraft if they're unwary and, and floating around. Uh, you know, are people going to switch to that for their engineers? Are they just going to go back to some decimators and a grenade on the point? The tank mines seem like a a, a really resource intensive way to get rid of maxes. You're spending uh, you know multiple hundreds of resources just to drop some things that you're not going to get back, and maybe you don't kill the max anyway. So I, I, I'm really kind of curious to see if that helps. Certainly, I think it helps with uh, defensive point holds and uh, uh, you know allows the last guy in the back once everyone's crushed out of it to stop that first wave of maxes coming through of course we've seen gifts now already on the reddit about the dangers of that you can kill your entire squad or your entire platoon with a well-placed grenade so we'll see how all that works out and um the teams today i don't know anything realistically or the information on who is on what team is that a straight up split are we talking waterson versus matherson are we talking yes. hybrid teams it is hybrid teams, and I, I really like the way that Emerald went about this. They understood that there's really no way to get get around this without having drama and out having people saying, oh, you chose so-and-so and whatever. So they did a draft. They did a draft just like the NBA or, or the NFL, and it was like schoolyard rules. Uh, one force commander chose one outfit, and they did, uh, they did it live on their Reddit, put it up there for everyone to see, let people, you know, talk about, oh, I can't believe you took outfit number whatever because, you know, these people were still on the board and everything like that. So you really Guys, got a lot um, out of that. Sorry to interrupt. Are you streaming, Farah? Ah, ah, I am streaming. I'm streaming to Planetside Battles 2. <laughs> well done. Well done. This is why we no, have a pregame show. This is why we have a pregame show, okay? So, look, I tell you what, we will continue this pregame show and we'll end this in two minutes, then we'll restart the stream on Planetside Battles 1, and then then we'll put bits up onto YouTube later, okay? I can host it, mate. Just switch it over. Yeah, just host it. Oh, just rehost it. Job done. Sorted. Oh, well, anyway, continue on your saying, Red. Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm less intrigued by the max changes. I still think people are going to pull maxes. It's just a really easy way to get them to a point. I think that those spawn changes are really going to be the, the difference maker here. I think that in one fell swoop... The game has changed. You, I don't know that QRF tactics are going to work anymore. Uh, that was something that a lot of different servers did. They had that that squad, that that platoon of good players whose job was to hop around the map at high speed and go deal with whatever whatever problems. Even with galaxies? I mean, surely you can still... It's, it's, it's 600 meters, so squad spawning into a galaxy that's on the other side of the continent, is that going to work? Well... If you're in friendly territory, it does. But if you're, you know, if you mistime that, you wind up in enemy territory. It drops you at a base next uh, next door. It really, really changes that. I think you're going to see a lot more having to stand and fight at a lane, uh, which was kind of the incredibly old school tactic in in Server Smash until the QRF became the dominant uh, the dominant way of doing things. Well, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how it's going to go, because it means, I suppose, is, is airplay then and air control going to be even more important? Not necessarily on air to ground, but just uh, air to air and allowing you to have that freedom of movement, ability to move where necessary with galaxies, I suppose. I think that I think that definitely becomes a major factor here, and it definitely becomes an issue of if you can take out that galaxy when he's in his friendly territory, allowing people to spawn into him before he gets into yours you're now stopping really the only way that they have to get in there. You're not going to have to worry as much about that one guy sneaking in with an ESF under stealth and dropping a beacon and suddenly you have, you know, an entire squad, an entire platoon in there. That that kind of tactic takes a lot more time and it takes a lot more uh, thought behind it than just sending somebody off and, and moving across the map. So if you're just joining us, guys... Today is, is a special game. I realized it was a small blunder in streaming to Planetside Battle 2. Maelstrom was very good to mention that to us, so he's now got us rehosted on Planetside Battles 1, so we don't have to restart the stream. Uh, today we have a battle between the Hoss and Lock bonus and the Beastern Block Salt Miners. Uh, 
the factions should be fairly obvious, but Hoss and Lunas will be playing NCD, uh, NC today, and Beastern Block Salt Miners will be playing VS. Um, uh, we are on Amherst today. Uh, important difference on the standard Amherst map is the subterranean an analysis lane is not in play, so we'll be playing on the rest of the map. We've only realistically got about four lanes, but as uh, we were mentioning uh, a little bit earlier, the team sizes are only about 192 each because it's an all emerald affair here. And as um, Redland was just mentioning, the teams are a kind of a mixed uh, merger team where there was uh, a schoolyard rules where they're picking one out for each. Uh, so I think we're kind of pretty much up to speed then, uh, Redland, right? I think so. Why don't you go ahead and play the video and we can get people back over into Plant Side Battles too. Where we come from, we each fight for loyalty, for freedom, or perhaps enlightenment, but not here. Here we cast aside our disparate beliefs our barriers and preconceived notions, and band together as a global force to engage in the largest competitive battles the world has ever seen. We are the squads, the platoons, the empires and servers, full of players coordinating a complex game of strategy and tactics. This is where combined arms happens. This is where war comes to play. This is Server Smash. So we are now sub about three minutes now until we are actually going to start today's game. Uh, who's our force commanders today, Redland? Do we know? Uh, we do. I need to open up that document, though. Why don't you go open that up? I am curious about who's leading the two teams today. Uh... And uh, th we've got a number of kind of uh, uh, test matches happening on in the, in the summer, guys. This will be the first one where it's uh, kind of in one services themselves, Emerald Emerald. We do have um, Briggs Miller and uh, Connery Cobalt. They're coming up uh, next week, so uh, do stay tuned for them. Uh, we should have some good games there. I'm actually force so commanding for uh, Miller. Yes, you were saying. Our force commanders, uh, for Hassan Lock bonus, it is Eagle Eye Foley from Iron. And for Beastern Block Salt Miners, it is Runsta from Vault. Are these new Force Commanders? Uh, Eagle Eye Foley has, has Force Commanded for them. I don't believe Runsta has. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. And well, we see that. in these internals, we see, uh, you know, people who haven't platoon led, people who haven't Force led. This is the opportunity to kind of get them in there, get them some experience for, uh, you know, you have double of everything. So people get a lot more uh, experience doing stuff. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to that. It's it's always an interesting experience because, as I was just alluding to, um, uh, next week we have um, two other service matches. You know, Cobalt Connery and uh, Miller Briggs, and I'm trying my hand for the first time in Force Commanding, and I'm looking really forward to it. So, you know, always trying something new on Planet Side is all kind of awesome. And uh, you you can argue that Service Smash is the refined purity of Service Smash in a nutshell, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're we're taking something that's meant to have three factions fighting and only having two factions fight. But I think a lot of the tactics and a lot of the emphasis on command and control and going, and going for territory is what I think a lot of players want to see. Right. Um, yeah. you know, that, that's a lot of stuff that, that you hear, hey, devs, please give us better command ability. Please give us better ability to go after territory, even if, in this case, we're only showcasing two, two empires at a time. Yeah. Well, uh, we are just about a minute under, just over a minute to go, guys. Um, I'm going to start heading towards the Vanu Sovereignty Warp Gate if you want to head to the new conglomerate one. Uh, we're about to get start, head us off. Yes, Twitch chat, gentlemen and ladies, uh, is indeed Moobot is on vacation. You can type pretty much whatever you want because it's an emerald, emerald thing. Uh, go full cancer mode if you want, or be keep it civil. Civil would be nice. Um, but that's for you to decide, I suppose, as a collective. And, and uh, everyone knows the chat is over in Planet Side Battles, the the main channel, not on Battles Two. Yeah, yeah, the Planet Side Battles Two. The Moo Bolt will still be on Number Two. Uh, so, but we'll be being hosted by Planet Side Battles, so it's all good. All right, and um, I am really looking forward to this. Uh, what do you think about the drop in the beginning? Do you think it'll be like all uh, ESFs with a couple of galaxies full of maxes, making the most of the fact that you get free resources at the beginning? I see no galaxies whatsoever. Oh, I see one galaxy. Shh, for ESF. Don't tell anyone yet. <laughs> Wait till we start. I admit we were on a two-minute stream, but yeah. The, uh, no, I mean, uh, I think wow. that, that is... Uh, a lot of Scythe ESFs, yeah, in the first 15 seconds. Oh, I'm, this is going to be awesome. Uh, because I think it's the vast majority is all yes. Do you think you're going to have Baylors, or...? 10 seconds still stopped. Oh, here, we're about to find out. 
five, four, three, two, one. Match begin. Good luck to both teams. And we are now live in our Emerald versus Emerald game, and we are off. And uh, as usual, streak of ESFs heading out of the warp gate full speed. What about you, Redland? Huge streak of ESFs. Unfortunately, one of them crashed into the mountains here. <laughs> so you have to be able to fly your ESF. Oh, I guess we also had a fatality. Three fatalities already. Two. Yeah, well, there you go. Stats for you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, two main forces splitting off. I believe one's perhaps going for the Bastion and the other one's going to south. Oh, wait, no, I can see attack and defensive markers. Three goals. The Auxiliary Compound, the Bastion, and Deserted Mineshaft are the objectives for the um, Salt Miners. And Hassan Lock Bonus has put a massive number of people in the central area. Uh, they already started capping Raven's Landing. They moved on to Lord Oh, Lord. NC! That is the, um... The team names are going to annoy me here. They've tried to do an interdiction on Rockslide Outlook. Oh, they, it, unfortunately they didn't have enough people here. I, I just saw it happen. Oh no, the NC's pulled off! The VS didn't have enough people dropping in! So for the time being, um, Emerald NC has stopped em No! No, the oh, coin has flipped! So all of these NC people, it doesn't matter, time to leave. They, that was a beautiful maneuver. We've seen this before on Amrish, where uh, able to interdict a Rockslide Outlook allows you to get the Ascent quickly, but it's only a 20 second gap window, which means the Ascent and the Lithcorp Central will not be captured for free. Um, over in the north, we can see that um, Vanu Sovereignty is uh, attacking Soltic Charging Station, but interestingly enough, and we're going to go there now, McCall Auxiliary Compound is being attacked by um, Hossen Lock Bonus, NC, uh, pushing for the tech plant, I believe. And they're trying to get some uh, spawn sunder set up here. I, I, you know, I think this might have been one of the reasons for that ESF pull. Get all your people to the hex, and it doesn't ma that 600 meter thing doesn't matter. And holy cow, are there a lot of NC on this point? Sentry turrets, maxes. This is the freebie maxes that you get at the beginning. I'm not seeing any AV mines, but there's a thing about that, isn't it? You've got limited resources, and in a server smash, using AV mines is really expensive. And I think you know, I I'm. Uh, Maelstrom, please tell us the first time you see some archer kills, because I think that that is going to be, if, if you're trying to get rid of some maxes, even though you lose your, your main slot, that might be the way you do it in a server smash, to, to get rid of them with that. Oh, that might explain the unknown weapon I'm looking at. <laughs> well, try and figure out if you can see if there's an archer killing thing. <laughs> Only a couple of stragglers currently at McCall Auxiliary Compound. I'm not really seeing much in terms of uh, offensive play by... Uh, the Vanus Sovereignty. Big play for the Bastion, you see that? So Yeah, the, the VS have, have gone hard for it, and this is always, it always confuses me here, because the Bastion, we've never seen somebody take the Bastion on this map and get anything for it. And especially coming from the Eastern Warp Gate, where you have two connections into it, I, I kind of understand coming from the South, because maybe you can get those two lanes and push out and take some territory. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really not sure what it gets you from the Eastern Warp Gate. Well, we're under two minutes now for a Macalor Auxiliary Compound, and they're up to 71%, and Emerald, when they smell blood, they send in more. So I would send more forces to Macalor Auxiliary Compound to make sure that uh, Vanu Sovereignty Emerald can't do anything about it. Because right now, all those forces at the Bastion, once McCall Auxiliary Compound is captured, the new conglomerate forces, hypothetically, even with the, the spawn mechanics, could go to the Bastion and prevent a capture there. So they're getting the quick capture base before the long capture base goes through, if that makes sense. One of the things that we always talk about when Emerald plays in Server Smash is their use of Sunders, and you should come over to the D point of Split Peak Pass and just see what they are attempting to do. They're trying to, to chain Sunders back through. There's actually one that's nose down, probably going to flip over here if he's not careful, but they got four Sunders down on the D point. I will head there as soon as McKellar Auxiliary Compound uh, is either saved or captured. Also notice the 50-50 fight that's going at Soltic Charging Station. Ah, 53% now, so the Vanu Sovereignty failed to capture the, ch the, the, the charging station, so the new conglomerate managed to push that back. And it looks like the Raven's Landing and uh, Rock Slide Outlook, still got some NC there, interestingly, are both going to be captured within very quick time. It's only small forces at Lithcorp, and you're right, 50-50 fight going at Split Peak, but instead of there being a 50-50 fight at Bastion, all of the NC forces have been pulled to McCall Auxiliary. We've got reinforcements coming in from the Vanu Sovereignty that the populations are going up, but with 19 seconds to go, they're on the roof, are they? I can see them in the... Yes, they're on the roof, but with 13 seconds to go, New Conglomerate's fallen back to the capture point. It's not going to be enough. And I'm fairly certain that First Blood is going to be taken by, um, the New Conglomerate? 
Hoss and Lock bonus team? Yes, there you go. Hoss and Lock bonus takes Mechanical Auxiliary Combat. That means the Tech Plant is now vulnerable. Do they have anyone there? No, they don't. There's no one on the Tech Plant just yet, but they did get it. Now the choice is, does this offensive force go to the Bastion? Because surely you don't give the Bastion up for free, right? I mean, as I said, I, I think from the NC's perspective, the Bastion, I'm not worried about it. I'm, I'm really not. Let them sit there. They're, they're wasting most of a platoon, if not an entire platoon right there. And I'm, you know, obviously that's not where they're pushing. If, if, they were, if the NC decided they were going to push the north, maybe it's worth it to try and get the Bastion and push into the Araxcom and, and West Foothills. But right now it's obvious the NC have decided to push the, the south down by McCall and Split Peak. Uh, let them take Bastion. There's really only one place they're going to get into, two places, Lithcorp, uh, depending on who takes it here. So, so do you I, think I'm, this new conglomerate force is actually going to go to Split Peak Pass instead? I think I think you're already seeing them trickle in there, yeah. Uh, it's 50. Over at Soltech Charging, you have some Gal Drops coming in for uh, Salt Miners. Dropping in, trying to take out some of the NC. This is right now uh, a deployed Sunder fight. You have actually, it looks like there are, are alternating deployed Sunders. There was a, there's an NC one and then a VS one that's technically behind enemy lines. I think the NC finally found that they're, they're trying to pop it so that they don't have to worry about that behind them anymore. Something I don't see happening that we saw the last time we were fighting at this base is uh, nobody's driving the Sunders onto the A point of Soltech charging. That was a great way. Getting a Fury Sunder on there, getting people off with the Fury Sunder, was a great way to uh, to clear that point earlier. Oh, the Vanu Sovereign is actually beginning to capture no one. The new conglomerates captured the Charlie point. The Vanu Sovereignty is trying to get the Alpha point, but they're just not flipping at the moment. But importantly, they, they are bringing the Spawn Sunder option in. This is the Vanu Sovereignty on the north side of Split Peak Pass on the higher hills. That should give them a very strong um, ability to kind of spawn in and reinforce the Alpha capture point uh, more efficiently. This is light assaults using um, crossbow. As you, you know, as you mentioned the Bastion, look at that. It's suddenly a 50-50 fight. The NC decided to go there, and I guess, you know, that, that's an interesting way to use that base. Let the enemy sit there long enough to start pulling their people away, and then when it gets down to a 24-36 you know, uh, fight... Drop your people 50, away. yeah. And, and uh, we get uh, multiple things going on. Also, Lithcorp Central. Uh, <laughs> have you seen much Air Force out of curiosity? I have not, no. And, I mean, th that we may be seeing less Air Force here because, obviously, a server only has so many pilots and they are going to... You're going to split that, that force in half. So you don't suddenly get double the pilots just because you're fighting yourself. Hmm. Well, it looks like an infantry squad mainly on Lithcorp Central. Uh, because no one can spawn at the base, it's a neutral base, uh, they just have to be concerned about um, perhaps spawn sunders? No, the spawn sunders from the Vanu Sovereignty that was coming up, the, the walkway has been destroyed. It looks like the new conglomerate are sending sunders to the Ascent. Is the Ascent kicked off? The Ascent has kicked off. Oh, yes, I want to go to the Ascent in a second. We'll wait till Lithcorp goes through. It looks like it's going to be a capture for the uh, new conglomerate unless Vanu Sovereignty can somehow get in here. They're going to need a galaxy. Uh, the NC dropped on the, the balcony, tried to take it, but... Uh... It, you know, it's it's interesting watching Emerald play itself because we saw a ton of NC uh, Sunders get into the other bases. Now we're seeing a ton of VS Sunders underneath the tech plant here, uh, just absolutely wrecking everything. I think Sunders in Server Smash are absolutely the best bang for your buck. They cost relatively little resources. They are a huge, huge benefit both from spawning and just as a gun platform. And that's what you see a lot of people pulling. Will you truly allow well, this, this is, it's a tiny fight at Lithcorp Central, but it does not look like the new conglomerate are going to have any resistance here. The Vanu Sovereignty is not putting any fight at Lithcorp Central. No spawn options, perhaps they're far too focused on um, the Ascent, perhaps? Anyway, Ascent, where are we fighting at? Oh, it looks like a Twin Sunder push by the new conglomerate against perhaps the Charlie Capture Point. I don't see any infantry to help them out. Oh, there's a lot of rockets from lots of directions. <laughs> that's, that's not going to end well. Soltech uh, charging station is 20 seconds away from the VS capturing it here, and I just don't see how the NC are going to get on here. They're they're on the bad side of the the point. Oh, they're oh never mind. They're pushing onto it right now. They managed to clear people out of the um, the solar panels. And oh wow, they get there on the right four here. second marker. Yeah. And it's it's sufficient. Wait, no, it's reinforcements from the Vanu sovereignty. Is this drop pods coming in? No, okay. It was close. They had been for it's well, it's zombies. Let's watch.
the NC should be able to hold this. They have both sides. They got a max as well. This, now. It, this is it, Soul Tech charging, which few people ever fight it because it's so close to the warp gate, is a really interesting base to, to do here. You kind of have to have two or three spawn options to be able to get your guys to come to the point in the right way. And if you are missing one of them, or certainly if you're missing two of them, there's really no way that, even though it's an open cap point base, it's really difficult to get up this on. Is, this is what I love, though, because it's so rare to fight at bases right next to warp gates. Normally, you'd be fighting against the warp gate that belonged to, like, for example, the Amherst Western warp gate TR. You know, Soltech would be a TR base, and you wouldn't fight the other faction here. And this is why I love about service matches. You have the ability to fight at bases. I'm going to go to the tech plant next, where normally... You know, you just you just simply don't fight there, and you don't fight there um, when one team doesn't have the warp gate, because the team that has the warp gate has the ability of the air defense. They're just gonna run in, do a bombing run, and then fly back to the warp gate for safety. It just it's so much more entertaining. Salt miners are taking the last point at the bastion here. It's already down to 122. I'm gonna see if it goes down anymore once they flip the point completely. Uh, the bastion sub 60 seconds. Yeah. The last spawn sunder for um, uh, Hossen. Lock bonus and C looks like it's gonna get blown up. Yep, that's the last spawn option. Galaxy run trying to drop on B point here. They're already they're already seeing lots and lots of fire coming toward it. We see if they get on the point here and stop this. It's still not gonna give them enough time, I don't think. Barely what five six people dropped out of that. Yeah, and they're gonna flip it, but it's just not enough. It's gonna be still under thirty seconds. They gotta get another point. Yeah, and the problem is that the Charlie capture point is exposed in the open, surrounded by Sunders. All right, they've bought themselves a minute. It's an important minute. It does mean that if you have extra reinforcements on the way, or if you have population on the move, Vanu Sovereignty already running to Bravo. The Alpha capture point's flipping. Nope, it was, but not now. I think this is just a delay here. There really wasn't anyone to back up. Mm, they've got EMP'd as well. And this is the thing in Service Smash. I think EMP um, implant is like... Yes, you're right, it is flipping. Wow, this is stalled. Every moment that this stalls is buying NC precious amount of time if they want to bring in population. Okay, the A point's back, but now the Charlie point is flipping. I don't even see where these guys came from. Hero <laughs> medics on the point. Oh, the beacons on top of the tower, that's where they're coming from. Oh, it's just, it's just nothing but medics, man. They're keeping themselves up. <laughs> and they're holding on to the Charlie point, but they've lost the Alpha and the Bravo point. So, and now the Vanu Sovereignty is coming into the Charlie point. Medic's just holding him for dear life. No, that's it. It's gone. That flip's going to go, and the Bastion is now... Oh, wait. Another Medic? Perhaps? He's thinking about it. Oh, he can't. All right. Two seconds. One second. There we go. Salt Miners take their bloods, and they get themselves the Bastion. That was uh, definitely a, a last-minute attempt there that almost, I mean, well, I don't know about almost worked, but it certainly was a lot more than I think the VS were expecting. Uh, the NC, they weren't just in there to hold one point. They were trying their damnedest to, to flip everything. Well, if we do a review of the map at the moment, we can see that um, Vanu Sovereignty is taking the Bastion. Where did they go next? Because they could go to Lithcorp Central, but it's two squads of NC. Um, probably going to do a defensive save. You see the ascent, three and a half minutes, high numbers of a uh, new conglomerate, and the Vanu Sovereignty has pushed the new conglomerate off the McTech plant onto the auxiliary. Split peak pass, two to one numbers in favor of uh, NC, but that's a long kind of base capture. And we see that the Vanu Sovereignty is back again at Soltech charging station, that's the salt miners, and there's sub 60 seconds to go. You know, it's interesting. I think that if you hold the Bastion, specifically what they're doing here, and, and again, pushing the VS are pushing back at Soltech Charging, you now have to use the Bastion to try and exert force on the central area. And that means moving your people. I wouldn't even do it to Lithcorp right now. I would I would dump them on the Ascent and try and stall that out, then get Lithcorp. <laughs> Did you see that? So wow, they brought a Sundra in to the Soltech Charging Station. Battle Sundra on the point. The other base that hasn't flipped yet and, and really is going back and forth is Split Peak. I'm actually heading over there right now. And they've got a second Battle Sundra on the um, antenna. Much, much better. Oh, Battle Sundra's looking for spawn options for the new conglomerate on the outside of the walls, but you guys are in the wrong place. New conglomerate, the Vanu Sovereignty's got their spawn, well, squad spawning Sundra on the capture point. 19 seconds to go. And. You never came to uh, Split Peak Pass, did you? I did. I saw all the Sunders and Delta. Well, there's a reason why it's ticking down at six minutes and not at five. <laughs> because the Sunders just... <laughs> I will have to have a look at that as soon as Soltech goes through. 
This that, is kind of like everyone in the pool right Soltek here. Soltek charging, weird. taken by the Vanu Sovereignty. That does mean that Soltek Gorge is a fantastic base to battle over, could also go as well. The ascent now is sub two minutes. Lithcorp is back in the hands of the Vanu Sovereignty. Looks like they're sending reinforcements, perhaps from the Bastion, and they're also pushing in uncontested to Deep Core Geolab. I'm going to head over to Split Peak. I tell you what, the new conglomerate hold on Split Peak, although they've got more numbers now, it's great because it allows them to flesh out battles elsewhere. And uh, the score's tied at the moment, Redlin. Yeah. That's what happens when you have two neutral bases that haven't flipped yet. Yep, we can see the Rep Sunder, Rep Sunder, Ammo Sunder, uh, something Sunder, and Blockade. I'm heading up to the Ascent to watch the final cap here, see if uh, if Block Salt Miners can, can make a, a save on this at the last possible second. Which base are you talking about? I'm heading to the Ascent. Oh, oh right, yeah. 60 seconds. With two squads, it looks like they're going to get Lithcorp. I tell you what, if they get Lithcorp right, all they need to do is perhaps push Raven's Landing and cut the Ascent off. And then at a later point, maybe not immediately go for Raven's, but you know, cut off the Ascent and then... Actually, they're coming here right now. They, here, here they are dropping on C point. Oh yep, see that? The thing is, ah, uh, the, the timer's very quick, right? So they're going to get an uncontested Charlie capture. But they need to get a second point. Full galaxy drop, uh, reg spawn ins. Uh, they, they get C point, that's guaranteed, but with now. Okay, C point buys them two minutes. That's more than enough time. Is that a battle thunder for the new conglomerate coming up the road? It is, and they're trying to use the Furies to shoot on the galaxy. <laughs> I suppose whatever works. Oh wow, the galaxy does pull off. Fair enough. And it's gone. Galaxy's down. Beacon is set up for the uh, Vanu Sovereignty Forces that they sent. They're buying time, I suppose. I mean, oh, but we totally missed Lithcorp. The new conglomerate came in and saved Lithcorp in the last 10 seconds. Yeah, and they've all been totally pushed off. Well, I suppose if I was the Vanu Sovereignty and I was pushing Lithcorp, I would use this time perhaps to send more people to the Ascent. But look at that. The Ascent is only 12 people each. The real fighting is going on a G core Geo lab. I mean, this is suiting the new conglomerate because at any point they can just send in the extra reinforcements that they need to um, make a save on the ascent. Because as soon as they take the Charlie point, which is looking like they'll do, they're going to get the ascent here for free. Well, not for free, but relatively low number cont uh, contesting. I'm heading over to Maxilla, uh, to Makala Auxiliary Compound, which the VS have dumped themselves into pretty hard here. Yep, it looks like that's it. There's no way they can stop this. The ascent. Four seconds to go, I need two points to stall it out. That's it, so, this is interesting. Bastion in the hands of the Vanu Sovereignty, Ascent in the hands of the new conglomerate. NC is now saving Lithcorp Central, so they can be able to recontest a Bastion. 69 seconds to go until Deep Core Geolab, we'll check that out. Relatively small numbers here at McCullough Auxiliary, at least as far as infantry. Uh, there was a lot of Sunderers driving around outside. I just don't maybe they hadn't deployed anyone. And the NC are actually managing to push back up onto the point with a nice max push here. The Deep Core Geo Lab, they've got that upper balcony looking down on the capture point. Really good kind of flanking fire. I don't think the Vanu Sovereignty, who have got the L shaped building next to the capture point, but the capture point is outside the building, doesn't look like they're going to be able to uh, make the cap go all the way. Awesome Lock Bonus definitely uh, using their namesakes here to flip this point back at McCall Auxiliary. In fact, there are so few uh, normal human beings that they're having trouble flipping the point. They got a lot of maxes on the point, but they don't have enough people on the point. I'll tell you what, the capture is this reinforcements? I believe it is. We actually have some Air Force and ground poundings. We've got a Valkyrie flying around and some beacon drops. Infantry's on the capture point. <laughs> Such a death hole. He's just standing there and someone throws a grenade. They've got the capture point. It's sub 60 seconds. It looked like the new conglomerate were going to get it back. They were flipping the point. But this constant pressure from the Vanu Sovereignty on Deep Core. And they've got 58%, no wonder. And they have three spawn sunders surrounding the northern side of the base. It's going to take some reinforcements or air force for the new conglomerate to make a save in Deep Core. Where are their numbers? Wow, New Conglomerate is now counter pushing a rock slide. Big numbers there. So even if the Vanu Sovereignty gets deep core, they're gonna be counter pushed a rock slide. We saw and this when remember, Yeah, this was this was Connery. This was what Connery's play was. Did against Briggs. They pushed into um uh, uh what was it? The um uh, Crux headquarters, yeah. Well, I mean if you're awfully weak. Uh, large facility. Yes, well, yes. there was a huge air presence. The air presence is what got it. Right, 
fresh uh, galaxy drop by the new conglomerate on the capture point. This is pretty last minute. They've got a max on the point and they've got the infantry on the point. They're here on the six second marker. Second max coming up. Third max coming up. I'm not seeing any funny sovereignty maxes. It's pretty much all Hoss and Lord bonuses at the moment. And for the time being, base is saved. In terms of population, they balanced out at 50 50, but they were able to drop the people on the point. Is that another Vanu Sovereignty Galaxy coming up? Well, let's see who drops. Couple of guys, doesn't look like much. No, they don't have anyone in the galaxy. Really nice. Last second point hold here going on from the VS. The VS only hold a point at Split Peak Pass, and there is just two heavies. D down to one heavy. There's one heavy remaining here, using cover to his advantage, just picking off everyone who decides to come around and try and get to this A point. He's got reinforcements coming in from the Sunder to the north side of Split Peak. But you're right, the new conglomerate, this base has been ticked down so much, now they've got that three capture points. This will be their next play. I mean, NC, I would say the NC is beginning to get a kind of a stranglehold here on the game, or at least get the momentum. They've managed to make the save in Deep Core uh, Geolab. The looks like they're going to get Rock Slide, although it's up to VS to redeploy in the next 50 seconds. And with Split Peak Pass, we're down to 90 seconds to go. Although it looks like it's going to be um, stalled as soon as the alpha capture point gets held. But it yeah. is, like, if all four power points get captured, though, it is less than 60 seconds. I will, I will mention that that, uh, that heavy who was doing such a great job of picking people off with headshots was, had to be taken out eventually by a jackhammer. Well, the, oh, well, here they come. The, the VS in force now, uh, entire squad back on A point. So they're absolutely going to contest this base again here. And uh, as soon as you get the A, they're already pushing infantry up to the uh, Bravo capture point. Uh, we are seeing, um, yeah, and you notice this, the new conglomerate, someone has spent the nanite resources and put down um, uh, AV mines. So five seconds here. Oh, huge, huge max push. Huge max push. Where? At, uh, Rockside Outlook. They're going to try and get this. It doesn't, it's too late. It's too late. Huge. What? All that resources then wasted. That was going to try to recapture the base? Was, yeah. And, there, and there's enough of a, a setup here that they just got mowed down as they came through that, uh, that little rock archway. But they can't get to the capture point. And um, no one's at Crux headquarters yet for the new conglomerate. And they are flipping the point. So they did make it to the point and they're flipping it. The question is, they, do they have a spawn, Sandra? And the answer is, it does not look like it. So new conglomerate can just spawn back in. And they already are spawning back in and attacking the uh, Vanu Sovereignty forces from behind. It looks like this is going to be a tenuous four minute capture. I don't think it's going to go through. No, there's just one max left now for the VS kind of hiding in the corner hoping nobody sees him. No, that was a jumping yes, rocket launcher to the face. I think that, that was the first major Nanite mistake I've seen happen here where, you know, you, as a platoon leader, you have to think, what are my chances of getting to that point? Do I really want to spend all those nanites on maxes and grenades and stuff to get there? Maybe it's, you know, make the effort, try and get there as infantry, but maybe this is the time. Oh, uh, I think the Vanu Sovereignty is trying to get rid of those Sunders now in Delta. They've got all three capture points except for the Sunder Delta point. There's <laughs> lots of smoke and rockets going in, but this Sunder line is being held. Repair Sunders with engineers doing the repairs, blockade Sunders on the flanks. And the amount of fury fire is very, very hard to break. <laughs> it's just not working! <laughs> I would not want to go anywhere near the entrance of that tunnel right there. I mean, what do you do? It's... We'll just perpetually stall this base out, and it's bang on 50-50 fights, but the new conglomerate has a significant progress um, advantage on the cap timer. It's they're on around the 17 or 18 minute out of 20 in terms of capture. Um, Soltec Gorgeous going down two minutes, that might be worth interesting. That's another potential progress for the Vanu Sovereignty. Um, looks like there's a small cap going at Lithcorp. Uh, Central, Deep Core uh, has been just repulsed. Okay. If I'm you were to see if, if the NC are moving on Crux, because that, I think, is the weak point of this map right now. If they can do a sustained push on Crux headquarters, it, you're right, it doesn't look like anyone has any air support up of, of note that we've seen. So can you get down there? Can you get an attack on Crux headquarters, keep your spawn senders up, and get that base? If you do, it's it really just destroys the entire Eastern Warp Gates. Uh, well, uh, at uh, Soltec Gorge, it looks like we have... 
a 50-50 fight that's ongoing. And the Vanu Sovereignty has a number of Sunderers set up on the Alpha side. However, the new conglomerate have got forces also further south. It looks like they've got, at least got a max and some infantry. Perhaps they had a Sunder here at a certain point. But it's mainly all the vehicles are in the hands of the uh, Vanu Sovereignty. They also have infantry on the bridges um, on the direction of the spawn room. So they're basically... It's kind of fighting going to the north and the south of the capture point. Uh, but with 60 seconds to go, it doesn't look like the new conglomerate are anywhere near their uh, capture point. Oh, they're coming in via a beacon, that's why. Still, these guys are not really doing much, and <laughs> the Sunderer wants to play. <laughs> okay, we finally have a cap going on Crux Headquarters. I'm going to head over there and see what they're doing. Oh, man, that... Oh, but he... Well, he got nuked by AV mines! Alright, fair enough. Let's get revenge, but they didn't really do much. Uh, Vanu Sovereignty Galaxy. It looks like they're going to get Soul Tech Gorge for free. I wonder if you've probably been given a lane assignment, right? And it looks like the Vanu Sovereignty team that's on uh, Soul Tech Gorge. Oh, you poor harasser. You're upside down. Uh, it looks like the Vanu Sovereignty team is slightly stronger than the new conglomerate one, simply because it's roughly 50-50 fights um, with slight kind of uh, reinforcements at the very end. And that's two bases now that this team on this lane has taken. The facility is ours. And I think that this is also what we were talking about before. It's a lot harder to move people between those lanes. So, in, you know, I, I don't know how the force structure is for either of these teams, but it's a lot more difficult if somebody says, hey, we're going to have this squad or two that's supposed to hop around. Crux headquarters over. cap started. Yes, I'm over here right now. All three points are held by the NC, and uh, there is, a, I see a little bit of air. There's a lib and a couple of ESFs here for the VS, but that's it. Well, there's a very strong push by the uh, Vanu Sovereignty. They got a max, they got a, a spawn Sundra, and a good squad or two of infantry on the Lithcorp central capture point. Incoming an uh, NC Galaxy, dropping a couple of guys on the roof, right? So you've got a full squad of um, NC infantry on the roof of the capture point at Lithcorp central. Let's see whether or not they can make a stall in the next 35 seconds. No maxes, though. Distressing lack of anti-air coming from the NC here at Crux Headquarters. I don't see anyone using, or I see a couple people using lock-on launchers. I don't see any burster maxes, don't see any block or anything. And they're just getting harassed. This is just a single ESF and a live nail. Brutal contesting going on the capture point of Lithcorp Central. A lot of EMP grenades going off. And there's a lot of attempts to C4 or get rid of that spawn sundra, but... Oh, now there it goes. And wow, it wipes out an entire squad of infantry. Vanu Sovereignty still has control of the capture point though. They still have infantry control. There's one NC medic on the point. He's helping contest it. And there's a second light assault for the NC there. And now another medic for the NC. Res grenades going off. It's still 10 seconds. C4 has been thrown from the roof. Looks like the reinforcements for the NC are just frantically running onto the capture point from the roof. The reinforcements from the Vanu Sovereignty have to go up the hill. And the NC with the res grenade wars have managed to get the capture point. In terms of population numbers, they're slightly under popped to 47%, but all their guys in the point, and they've got control of the point. It's going to be infinitely hard enough for the Vanu Sovereignty to get back. And uh, you're right, Crux, we can see 64% now of Vanu Sovereignty. And yeah, wow, Split is. Peak is still <laughs> ongoing. And the tech plant has now been ticked down. I would, I, I don't know that I would have assumed that Split Peak would have just, you know, I, I figured somebody would just eventually overpop it and take the stupid thing, but it just, it stayed, you know, one side holds two points, the other side holds two points the entire time. The NC do have the advantage here because they hold more of the cap timer, so every time they manage to flip another point back, they take more time off of the base. Mm, and, and the fact is that they've got the guaranteed strong point of Delta, so even whenever they're out popped, they can just stall for time. Then what do you do as the... Uh, Vanu Sovereignty, how do you break that I efficiently? How, I mean, how do you, do, do you drive your own Sunders in? How do you drive it in? I mean, do you use AV mines? Is that going to be nana efficient? An entire platoon of archer snipers out, out the back end sniping them? That's... You have to break through the repair Sundra and the pair infantry, and, yeah. and then you're going to get furied. It's just... That's not practical. But the Bravo capture point and the Alpha capture point both being now contested by the new conglomerate. Looks like this is going to be... If B point goes through, which it looks like it will... Oh, the Charlie point's going back. It's still 90 seconds. But this this looks like it might be it now. It looks like the new conglomerate are, are playing for keeps. That's it. 60 seconds. Yeah. 
This is a hard choice now for the VS. Do you go and try and stop this split peak thing, which you know you aren't going to be able to get D at least easily, or do you try and save, you know, Crux, which is a 50 50? Do you go and stop what's going on at your tech plant? Uh, you know, do you go try and push for Lift Corp again? Stuff like that. Well, the cap on Charlie by the Van of Sovereignty looks like it's going to fall, fail. It has. Nukem Gromit's going to get C point. This is going to be, yep, around 30 seconds. Uh, you've got some spawn galaxies, perhaps for the some Valkyries for the Vanu Sovereignty. Another squad, another spawn options, spawn options from the Sundra to the north of the A point. If they can get the A point, they're only going to stall this down to about a minute. They need to get their hands on the Bravo capture point next, and that's where the main fight's going to be. And this is going to be pretty desperate because it's going to be super close. Their EMP on the A point is going to take a while for their shields to get back. The new conglomerate know exactly what's happening. They've fallen back on the Bravo point. We can see they've got about a squad here. And right now, 23 seconds, they cannot afford to lose a point and they must get a capture point, either Bravo or Charlie. And the VS are spreading out, they're trying to push onto Bravo, there's already people defending it there, we'll see if they can get in through the door here. They've got 10 seconds to breach the defense that's currently set up at Bravo. Playing for it, 4 seconds to go, they need to fight past 3 people. But this one heavy assault needs to- no, it's not enough! There we go. Uh, and I know that that I know that that base cap says uh, goes to the revolution, but I give this base to the AOD Sunderer chain that is down <laughs> there at D. They just simply could not be removed. So uh, okay, now the, so we can see that uh, the new conglomerate team is slowly beginning to get an advantage here. The uh, Soltek Gorge is being ticked down by two to one numbers in favor of the NC. The Bastion currently has population advantage of two to one. They've probably got too much population on Bastion. Deep Core isn't being contested. Lithcorp isn't being contested. Crux is, however, and so is the Tech Plant. So right now, momentum and tempo is definitely on the new conglomerate side as they're fighting for two large outposts belonging to the new conglomerate. The lack of air force is, is really kind of startling um, uh, compared to the other matches we've been seeing, especially compared to that, that Connery Briggs match we saw very recently here. It, it, it allows these teams to set up sunders in places that would, you would be punished heavily for it um, in the past. Generator destroyed. Oh, there's a small whale battle going on over the tech plant, but uh, nope, that's it done and dusted. Uh, the tech plant... Wow, that's a little explosive. The actual uh, tech plant itself is sparsely populated. Uh, I think it's mostly on the ground floor, which we'll go check out. Yeah, okay, so the new conglomerate forces are actually on the ground floor uh, rather than the upper floors of the capture point, you know, basically killing anyone that comes in via the shields. I suppose Where that's an effective method. Gorge, which the uh, NC have managed to push back out and they're, they're taking this back. And this is a terrible base to try and have to defend from your own spawn areas. This is definitely the kind of place where you need to bring in your own spawn sunder. The VS actually trying to do that right now. The NC don't have a whole lot of people trying to stop them. Ne actually, as I say that, never mind. They got two heavy assaults rocketing the thing. Oh, the new trying to across those bridges is just uh, is terrible to try and get across at this point. So if the VS can set up a, a sunder and... I see something smoking here. It was, oh, nope, that was the VS sunder. The new conglomerate's bought in the Battle Sundrum Kali Tech Plant in the Central Bay Area. And we have uh, two NC Libs that I finally see here uh, showing up over here at Soltec Gorge. Uh, looks like the Vanu Sovereignty are perhaps dropping infantry forces via galaxies on the balcony section, but the new conglomerate are waiting for it and watching for it. This is dangerous because, yes, there's time left, yes, there's three and a half minutes left, but you are allowing the enemy to gain a lot of tempo on your own tech plant. What's going on at Crux? Uh, Crux was a 50-50 fight with two points held last I looked at it. Soltec Gorge just fell for the NC, and I assume that this fight's going to move on to Soltec Charging uh, again here. You know, I think that the NC originally were saying, we don't really care about this lane, we'll let them fall back as far as Quadi Amp Station, but we might have just seen some of the first force moves of the match. As you said before, it was the VS that were kind of dominating up here, and I don't know if some of them got moved away or maybe replaced with somebody else. It took this long into the match, but the NC seemed to be able to have that momentum and push back along this lane. And speaking of which, the SCU at Macala Tech Plant was also charged. The Vanu Sovereignty are on the balcony trying to push in, but uh, Hoss and Locke, they're using um, one max, got good strong control on the balcony, overlooking the capture point. Doesn't, what kind of population numbers are we talking here? 56% VS. Are they more focused on the SCU? SCU's got three seconds to go. 
The ends? Oh, the Bulldog Sunder is on the, the balcony here, but there goes the SCU. Have they got a- has, has the Vanu Sovereignty got a, a backup spawn? They have some galaxies out the back end, but that's it. Wow, that's- that's bad. <laughs> We're only like an hour and 25 oh, in. No, they, no, they, have, they have a Sunder out the back side too, but it's in a- not the greatest of spots. It's outside the shields. I'm trying to use a galaxy, um, for bulldogging through, I guess that kind of works. Are they brute forcing their way now into the- no, they still can't get into the balcony. I, you know, I mean, I would almost say that this is the kind of place where you want to put a Sunder back over by your own spawn room and try and come into the, the double doors through the non-functional gun deck. We saw that happening the last match as well. They have 90 seconds as long as they can get their people here. Uh, NC is sending their reinforcements in as well, and all it takes is the NC blowing up those extra spawn Sunders, and the VS have no way to get to their own tech plant. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the temple momentum is definitely in the favor now of the new conglomerate. Um... Three large bases are under contention, uh, contention, all against the Vanu Sovereignty. And the tech plant is the most critical one, which is what we're at right now. With 60... Oh, big, big push from the VS coming out that, uh, that Sunder now. You can see they're really on the wrong side of this base. So they're, they're walking right into the teeth of the NC defenses. Well, they've got themselves on the, on the, spa, on the vehicle spawn deck area. They're underneath the balcony. They should be able to get to the capture point. No, reinforcements from the new conglomerate coming up from the uh, big gun side. Big gun. And uh, counter pushing the Vanu Sovereignty. The Vanu Sovereignty are stuck between two horrendous points as they're coming into this building. And it's really just the limiting factor of their, their spawn options. No one's fixed the. SCU. Oh, curiosity. Yeah, we have 30 seconds left. I mean, this is this is all or nothing right now for VS. They have to get this point, or it's over. There is there's nothing they can do. It's and like they, they one guy the defending the SCU right now. And at this point, you wouldn't want to repair it as the Vanu Sovereignty. And it's an engineer, by the way, so he's ready to repair it. Ten seconds to go. My goodness. There's no way they're going to get this. There's way too many new conglomerate on the capture point. Engineer turrets, maxes, infantry, all falling back to the point. There you go. Hossam Lock Bonus takes the tech plant. So, for if I'm correct, yes, this is the one weakness on this base for the north. They lose McKellar tech plant, they lose Mag Riders, not that we saw any to begin with. And now we see Crux headquarters brutally ticking down. I think Emerald's gonna dunk on Emerald if we're not careful here. This is, uh, this is always the, uh, the challenge. I mean, a lot of people use these internal matches for training, and... Uh, certainly, you have to uh, you have to make sure that when you're you're setting up your teams or when you're setting up your your uh, plans for what the teams are going to do, you want to make sure that all your sides are are learning from the match as well, not just uh, what what was the the score of Cobalt versus Cobalt? It was ninety. It was pretty brutal. Cobalt really dunked on Cobalt. Um, it's probably the most one sided service match we had in a while. No, sorry, ever. Let me rephrase that. Ever. Yes, ever. Uh, East Hill's checkpoint looks like it has a nice defense from the VS going right now. Uh, I, VS has dumped hard onto Crux headquarters to stop that, although the, the t point is still ticking down in favor of the NC, but they have 68% of the population as we speak. Uh, they also, VS have stopped the Soul Check charging push going on there, and they are fighting it off at the Bastion. But you can kind of see why the Bastion is not that great of a base to hold on this map. Uh, it's really difficult to use it to your advantage. It tends to wind up being this thing that your enemy can just drop people on and take time off of and you have to go deal with. And I've yet to see anyone use the Bastion to impart their dominance on a base outside of it for an extended period of time. You might get Deep Core for a moment, you might get Lith Corp for a moment, but it's not like you use it and you take control of an entire area. Well, I'm, I'm trying to watch the skies a little bit. And admittedly, this is a defensive save. Oh, wait, never mind. It's mostly just galaxies. Flying in galaxies reinforcements. Yes, there's another squad coming in of New Conglomerate. Full squad drop. Uh, going for the um, Charlie capture point on Crux. But uh, what I was going to get at is that I'm seeing more Vanu Sovereignty Air Force in terms of galaxies and the use of ESFs. And I think it's just the case of Emerald knows that Emerald's not going to bring Air Force. And because they know they don't have to worry about being, you know, bulldog galaxy into oblivion they're just quite content to both play the sort of gentleman's agreement of uh, we'll just play infantry only shall we or infantry and sunders i should say probably more than anything else yeah 
I'm over here at McCall Cart Mining, and this is a, this is a real challenge now for VS. I think you have to both save Crux Headquarters, which they look like they have 75% of the population there, but you have to save McCall Cart Mining as well. It keeps you connected to your tech plant. Right now, you know, all it takes is a really good push onto that tech plant. You can get it back, and you can take territory back and start pushing back in. You lose it to uncontested uh, push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, the, what, what, you know, why were you even there? Well, th this is the thing. The squad that's on Charlie, this is the entire NC force, and they are stalling twice their numbers um, holding this base out. And and the, the reinforcements are actually coming in for the Vanu Sovereignty to try and get Crux Headquarters to get the Charlie Point back, rather than going for Crux Headquarters. So it is vitally important in Server Smash to win your 50-50 fights, to win 50-50 fights, but also not to get sucked into fights where you have more population and think, oh, this is going really well, we're doing great, before you realize, oh, wait, we've got 60% population. This extra squad that we've got with us could really be used somewhere else. And no sooner did they get the Charlie point, does does the Alpha point then get lost? And Crux headquarters, uh, sorry, Macala cart mining is still ticking down, and it looks like it's just going to be abandoned. I'm not seeing any active, you know, redeploy or spawn in. Uh, for anywhere near uh, Macala cart mining, battle under it. <laughs> He tried to get him the point, <laughs> not quite. Yeah. This push at uh, the Bastion is. It's a serious push from the NC. They're not just here trying to tick down down points. They have a group of people who own B and C and are trying their damnedest to get to A. I, I was kind of surprised. I figured that this was just kind of delaying tactic from them, but they really want this base. And what's exasperating is that the <laughs> the McCallic Cart Mining Cap. There's nobody here. There's nobody on the capture point. It's empty. There's some vehicles around. Oh wow. Okay galaxy drop of new conglomerate because they see the population in it's the vanu sovereignty that's running on foot and they're having to battle their way through some horrendously placed spawns unders they have the nc has the pop there the uh, nc brought extra population back in vanu sovereignty is running up to the point but they're running all the way from the spawns and it was, it was a galaxy drop of nc on the point when they realized the vs was coming here comes the galaxy okay now they've got the point there was a gal drop flying in Pretty last minute here. And it's still not a guaranteed thing. In fact, the NC squad here with the Battle Sunders, it looks like they're going to retain control of the point. They are. And, and this is kind of desperate. We're seeing the Vanu Sovereignty having to run as infantry only, and we're seeing the new conglomerate with the tempo play, with the offensive play. They're the ones using the force multipliers to drink with the um, Battle Sunders on the capture points, and they take another base. That's McCallacart Manning. And now they can apply all their forces onto Crux headquarters. What's going on with the populations here, right? So Split Peak Pass, they've got slight advantage NC. McCalla Cart Mining and Crux. Okay, Crux, they've been pushed off quite heavily. And, but the thing is that now the way that the, the lanes are working out, they'll never lose Split Peak because, <laughs> because they've got the D point and they can just stall out for ad infinitum unless they want to push up to East Hills Checkpoint going towards uh, Anatha Biolab. Crux Headquarters, I would now send all my forces from Macala Cart Mining into Crux and just apply pressure there all the time and fight on the Bastion, fight on Crux, and then realistically you've only got lane in the West. So it becomes a three lane base and you're on a 53 to 42 point lead really just stall the game out. Three minutes and 35 seconds until uh, Crux Headquarters is fully saved. Um, I, okay, so the, the fact is Crux Headquarters, we've seen this Emerald do this before, they will redeploy onto a base in force before the timer goes fully out. So we can see a large combat force of Sunders is heading to, of course, McCalla Cart Mining, but the new conglomerate force doesn't really honestly need to fight them because they can't capture the base. There's no point in being here. They can leave McCalla Cart Mining for the next three whole minutes. Rock slide and cart mining are safe for three minutes. What does that allow the new conglomerate to do? Well, they're not anywhere near Crux or McCallar or cart mining. They're dropping on Bastion. They're really? This is gonna, they're trying to try and take down Bastion? Okay, okay. The, uh, I'd like to see them maybe counter push um, Crux, maybe don't let it go down all the way, or maybe help push Split Peak all the way back so they can push um, East Hills. Go check out Bastion then for the time being. It does mean that they're allowing the um, new conglomerate to set up at Crux Mining. 
Oh, sorry, the Vanish Orb instead of a Crux Mining. Okay, so they've got two out of three capture points on a 15 minute. Running up to the A point. They haven't quite gotten there yet, but they are in the tower. 15 minute base fight in a tower? I mean, you want to do that in a server smash? Uh, they're trying to make this a not 50. Oh, here they go. The point is flipping now. And now, unfortunately, VS is, you know, having to put out yet another uh, another fire. It's still a four and a half minute base capture. No, importantly, you have to see this in the eyes of, you're not capturing this base necessarily for base capture, you're, you're fighting for tempo. So the longer that you can get, you know, as so long as you can get that kind of tug of war rope where you can push the timer down as low as possible, it means if you get pushed off at this base, go play tempo elsewhere and just bounce back and forth. And slowly, with pressure, you'll take. I mean, interestingly, the only places, for the most part, that the NC are right now are Bastion and Soltec Gorge. Uh, they have really just token population. Uh, a little bit of split because they're still outnumbered there. And this is, you know, I, I guess this is one of the issues with especially losing that Macala cart mining uh, area there is there's only four places that we can have a fight right now. We can have a fight at Split Peak to East Hills Checkpoint, we can have a fight at Crux Headquarters, we can have a fight at the Bastion, and we can have a fight at Soltec Gorge. I think that already, if you have the momentum like the NC do, it just puts it even more in your favor. NC's doing a really, really tough spawn room contain. What kind of populations they've got? They've got 64%, wow. And it's hard to see how much VS is at Crux headquarters, but it's still got 40 seconds. The NC could still go back. Because, let's be clear here, there's practically nobody at Crux headquarters, guys. Which means a, a small squad of NC could go to Crux headquarters, flip the A point, and then the VS forces a Mikala cart mining or at Rock Slide can't do anything again. That would be a really clutch move. Right now, they're almost at 50 50 populations on um, the Bastion. They still got three capture points, they're on three minutes to go. It's up to the VS what to do, because uh, the NC could really... Be yeah, they are! Look, NC population just spiked at Crux headquarters. Let's go check that out. They did! They're flipping Alpha and Charlie capture points! So the, 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 the merry-go-round happens again, and they're flipping the Bravo point! Man, and this is, the, this is the problem. This is all about tempo. You have to leave people behind at Crux headquarters. You have to get tempo and you have to re-attack the bases you're connected to. In this case, Rock Sliding and McCullough Cart Mining. And look at this, 1224 waiting at McCullough Cart Mining. They've been totally sidestepped because they didn't leave enough people at Crux headquarters. They didn't have enough defenders to stay behind. And this is the problem. They're, the new conglomerate forces are forcing population at Bastion, forcing the VS to send at least 50-50 numbers to do, make the fight there. Meaning Meaning they're stretched out at Crux headquarters and before it can be fully saved they send a force back and then they keep momentum on their side. It is beautiful play and it's very much textbook emerald. The uh, the NC had all three points here. They just lost A at the Bastion but the VS are having a hard time pushing out of the tower. We see this a lot even on live. This is I think this is a base that tends to work kind of the same uh, on live as it does in Server Smash. It's just difficult when you have the when you only hold the tower. You kind of have to reinforce this base from a point outside of it. Bring in sunders around the side. Bring in tanks or, or harassers or something to take out these sunders that are placed at B and C point by your enemy. I think it's only a matter of time though until the uh, get rid. Yo, know, look at the number of AV. That's gonna be like eight or nine. <laughs> that was a lot of nanites for that Sundra. It's got to be at least 2,000 nanites there. What with the C4 and AV mines, yeah. but it worked. That spawn is finally down at C, and look, right, beautiful. As soon as that spawns down, here comes Emerald trying to, or here comes the VS pushing down onto it. But at what cost? What populations are they doing here? Still roughly 50-50. And but look at this. They've had to pull 70 to 30% back to stop Crux headquarters. And it is two points are in their favor. So it's two to one. And it's ticking down another three and a half minutes. It's really stalling a whole bunch of time. The new conglomerate forces have actually now gone to split peak. They've got 64% population. And that is hopefully going to allow them to push up to East Hills. And then Soltec Gorge. This base is going back and back. It is a straight up 50-50 fight. It is really just one battle group versus another battle group on a lane going at it. Very little kind of bouncing back and forth with, you know, uh, numbers and redeploys. 
I think, you know, we, we have to wait to see if the VS can resecure something and try pushing out. Uh, you know, they Ooh, need- Liberators! We've got some uh, NC Liberators kind of prowling over in Soltec Gorge. I think they need to be able to, to resecure Crux headquarters and then use it to try and get McCulloch cart finding back. If they can get just that one base, that one base kind of changes this map. It gives them a lot more options about where they can push. They can try and go into a tech plant. They can try and hold the Bastion. You know, they either need to be pushing there or they need to resecure Bastion, which looks like a 20 minute process at this point, and then push out maybe into Deep Core Geolab and, and Hayok Armory. The thing is, whenever you're trying to save a 20 minute base capture like the Bastion, it's an incredibly delicate process of uh, committing the bare minimal force required. You know, I actually see somebody down in. Uh, Another channel, who I'm going to go see if he wants to come up here and, uh, and chat with us. Just following this Liberator doing the emergency Gal drops. Can I have the Galaxy, guys? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Gal down. Uh, that was, uh, that was uh, very amusing. Kind of, uh, I think that's Walker fire from the Galaxy firing away at the Liberator. Quick emergency repairs. Yes, indeedy. Now, as regards to Soltec Gorge, we are 60 seconds to go. We're looking for infantry here. Sponsor under the surface. This is a Vanu Sovereignty. No, this is a new conglomerate base. Right, okay, my bad, derp. So the NC have uh, they've saved this. They're waiting for the timer to get fully saved. They've got a spawn under on the capture point. The Vanu Sovereignty is trying to get back to the base. Really sort of a tempo play to prevent the new conglomerate, which they do have, as we can see now, um, of the population of Soltec Gorge. They've got a guy there waiting to flip the point. So as soon as they get the space fully saved, they will gain tempo on this westernmost lane. We can so, see. Uh, yep. We have. We we will have a guest caster coming on right now. They're getting him set up with an obs cam. I was told he would be playing today, but uh, he'll be joining us in just a moment. Does his name begin with Poo and end as Grand Manners? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, someone hand him a glass of whiskey. Okay, now we're watching the Soltic Gorge fight with 14 seconds to go. The new conglomerate, they've got a guy on the next base um, over into the north at Soltic Charging. He's ready to flip the point, I think. It's hard to see because the Vanus Army has already got a Sunder there. We'll see if that starts ticking down. In terms of the Bastion, it's being saved four minutes till save, but it's taking 76% population of the Vanus Sovereignty, which means they're 50 50 on the crux and. They're slightly outpopped at Split Peak. And Split Peak, importantly, has been fully saved, which means East Hills is trying to fight for it. I think one capture point is still in the hands of the Vanu Sovereignty, which is why East Hills hasn't ticked down just yet. I'll go over to the Bastion and say, do they have a tank? Yeah, they do have a tick down in Soltech. We'll check that out. So that and means, yep. Again, and all three points are flipping, but they're they're being contested almost immediately. I think the real danger with this base is when the NC can just exert their will and take you know three four minutes out of it, and then you have to come back and get that that last resecure. If the if the VS here can manage to keep the base contested and keep flipping these points back and forth, it's less of a danger. Hmm. Well, it's mainly just an infantry force here at Soltic Charging Station, but even if they don't get the base, again, um, the new word of the day, rather than force multipliers, is tempo. They're, they're fighting on the enemy's base, and they're forcing them to come back and fight against them. And it allows them kind of tactical flexibility. The Bastion, still 81% population against 19. Uh, three minutes till full save. And it looks like Crux Headquarters is 50-50, bouncing back and forth. They really want to get their hands back on that and make a full save and then push out, but this is the problem with the large outposts. They need to push Rock Slide and Macala Cart Mining, which is really awkward, and Bastion needs to push Lithcorp and Deep Core Geolab, which they did try in the early parts of the game before they had to go full defensive. Very, very, very difficult to do. However, those number of bases, there are plenty of small one-point cap bases that the Vanu Sovereignty can, in the last hour of this game, counter-push and win the game. I mean, they're totally not out of the game yet. It's only 53 to 42. So we uh, we now have our uh, our guest caster who uh, decided to join us. Say hello, Poonaners. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Uh, I noticed something also interesting. It looks like the uh, Emerald Bros have decided, uh, at least on the NC side, for Eagle Eye to send a squad over to Vanu's way, help them out. 
Oh, well, that's very kind. That's something that the internal smashes can do. Um, but we actually just noticed in the last couple minutes that the populations were getting a little uneven for whatever reason. So one of the things that the uh, the reps do is they try and, and move squads back and forth uh, across so that they can try and even those populations out. And uh, Who was the unlucky squad? Well, I have to ask you, Poonanners, do you have your bottle of whiskey and the glasses with you today? You know it! I haven't started drinking yet because I wasn't playing, but now that i got a cam, I'm going to be in game. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the new drink words today are um, force multipliers and tempo. Hmm, why, why tempo? Tempo control, the ability to um, gain control momentum. So right now, for example, the new conglomerate has got tempo and Soltic charging station because the timer's on their favor. So even though the Vanu Sovereignty is ticking about with 60 seconds, they're fighting on their end. So Bastions t uh, and the Crux headquarters are all, at the moment, Tempo control for the new conglomerate. When Crux headquarters finally get saved in the next 14 seconds, if the Viano Sovereignty can push back against Macala Cartman and Rock Slide, then they'll be able to regain tempo control. And it's basically just keeping your enemy on the back foot and fighting on their territory, which is something that Emerald does really, really well, and I've just given a name to it. I, I'm interested I really here just in... asked so I could catch up and drink a bunch. <laughs> uh, so the VS um, uh, salt miners have managed to resecure Crux uh, headquarters. And yet they don't have anyone out to flip the other points. Rock slider. Oh, never mind. I, I lied. Just as I say that, they're flipping McCullough Cart Mine. That's what we need to see. It does. It's not just that it helps protect uh, Crux headquarters, but it is the lane that they need to be pushing to gain in the territory in the direction they need to. Dude, you need to come to Soltec. This is just a massive redeployment swarm of uh, new conglomerate. They just just they they were pushed off with less than 30 seconds to go, and then all of a sudden. Uh, there were Vanu Sovereignty Forces at Soltec, no, but they're back. And they ha it looks like they've got a spawn sunder, maybe about to deploy on the backside, on the north of the um, capture point. They've got control of the capture point again, and even if this is not a successful capture, it's still ticking down in their favor, and it buys them two minutes, two and a half minutes, where they can come back, even if they were pushed off right now. And if they oh have, yeah, the yeah. ground is covered in freedom for sure. Why don't you take it away, Poonanos? I'll let you just take over a bit. Oh, I was just saying, I was noticing that when you said that massive redeploy, I was looking, I was like, blueberries are everywhere, the Smurfs are taking down the A point and they're not going to give it up. The Vonu are going to have to keep trying, and they're going to have to try a lot harder, because the NC said, bring everyone. I I'm curious uh, as to your uh, your interpretation of our team names today, Poonanos. Oh yeah, the like beast mode and blah blah. blah. I, you know, it's funny. I saw them talking about it on the uh, Emerald boards, and I was like, I was like, all right, I'm never gonna remember these names. So I'm just gonna call them Eagle Iron Runster. <laughs> so <laughs> NC today is Haas and Lock bonus for obvious ah. reasons, and then you have Beastern Block Salt Miners with the image of a llama in a miner's hat as the V. Oh. With the Lasher. And the Lasher, yes. We, we love our llama. Uh, Y'all have seen my little map application that we use as basically our sand table for planning. Uh, one of the special buttons for the emerald specific ones is a big llama that you can put everywhere. <laughs> I tell you what, these, this, they've brought extra forces here. It used to, This was a purely 50-50 fight that was going on at oh, Soltec. Yeah. The Crux headquarters team, it looks like they're having to go back to Macala Cart Mining, and they're still doing Crux. Split Peak is still relatively small numbers, although the East Tails is ticking down for the first time now. Uh, the Bastion fight has completely died. There's practically no numbers. So it looks like the new conglomerate force that was fighting the Bastion has gone to Soltec Charging Station. It looks like the NC are really smelling blood on the westernmost lane. And they're going to apply pressure here because they pushed them all the way back to the banana building. Uh, pushing right into the spawn. I just noticed something really freaking hilarious. If you look at the Bastion and Lithcorp, okay, there's a whole bunch of guys waiting at Lithcorp Central that can't cap it because they're locked out due to the Bastion, right? And the Bastion got down to zero seconds on the cap. And now it's going back the other way. Ah, uh, and this has happened numerous times. This happened at McCalla Cart Mining earlier. On the last 15 seconds at Crux headquarters, they had abandoned the base entirely. Squad of NC came in, flipped all three points. Bastion's got like a few more seconds. It looks like they're just being held out by just like one third the NC to the uh, Vanu Pop. And they might actually start to get Lithcorp turning. There it goes. It looks like the Vanu Sovereignty Forces that were the Bastion, have they come to Soltec? They haven't, they're still out popped at 40%. New Conglomerate still controlling the Tetris building that's immediately adjacent to the capture point. 15 seconds to go! It's a horrendous fight going on at the large staircase. I can only see blue markers though on the minimap, I can't see any real numbers of VS. I think this is gonna be, um... 
Yeah, this is gonna be it. Four seconds to go. This is a yeah, capture. I've got BS count and they're not here, man. Where's our Freedom Eagle? Dead, they're all dead. Facility is lost for the moment. That is a very late gal drop coming in. Do they have a person on the next base taking down deserted mineshaft? Uh, no, like not the moment. No, nope, the Vonu got that one popped. Okay, so they've got Deep Core Geo Lab ticking down. Lithcorp doesn't have any, not ticking down yet. They've got half a platoon, if not more. Okay, so finally the Bastion is free. The numbers of the Bastion can go to either of those two bases. That's positive they're attacking, but it's not just the ability to flip the point down. It's how you attack, how you bring the spawns under, how you tactically play. You know, buying because right now they've got about a minute, a minute and a half at Deep Core or Lith Corp before the new conglomerate responds. What can you do rather than just sitting there, you know, sucking your thumb, not getting set up? Um, and uh, the McCalla Cart Mining has been stalled. Crux Headquarters is being, you know, griefed by another squad because Rockslide wasn't able to be ticked down. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, no. but What's important is not, not just the setup, but really planning for the counterattack because it's gonna happen. You know, you're yeah, gonna you're gonna get spawned on. Doesn't. Someone's gonna bring like 60% population or 70% population or maxes and even with the recent changes It's a case of what are you doing to counteract that redeploy that respawn that save play? What have you got ready for it? Well, I'm sitting here watching East Hills checkpoint which uh, the Vaughn will keep trying to take out the A point But they're not securing the high ground the NC have the high ground covered and just murdering them left and right. Oh, East Hills, you're right. Yeah, East Hills is horrendous the way that you can set up sunders between the spawn room and on the road and the capture point. That high ground, man, that high ground advantage is real right now. This was uh, this was an incident. It was in the Briggs Miller game. It was an absolute horrendous cluster fight in the last few seconds of the game. Or was it Connery Miller? Redland, help me out here. I do I'm not sorry, know, was, but it looks like the NC are slowly getting closer. The East Hills checkpoint, there was a very... Miller fought somebody here in the last few seconds. That was Connery, that was Connery Miller, uh, where it was down to the last four seconds uh, on this base here. And you're right, they are. <laughs> the Van of Sovereignty is... Oh, they're finally taking it down. They, they were... Oh, wow. That Max. That Max in the capture point. Covering that point, they're not going to get it. Saw a bunch of Jesus grenades come out and res a bunch of zombies, but it was too little, too late. The new conglomerate team logo has an NC Max on its uh, decal. Uh, I mean, it's living up to its team. And as I said, as I said earlier, I might be in the observer cam, so you can't tell. But I made sure I got in my NC Scat Max before I got in my observer cam, just to uh, you know. Oh, oh wow! Galaxy drop a Vanu Sovereignty! No, oh, it's just not enough! It didn't even get in the door! The Skyrimax was like, yes, thank you, thank you very much. It was a great drop, but too little too late, and not a Jesus grenade in sight. Wait! It's, it's, uh, it's too late. Nath is Southgate. It's now vulnerable. It's slowly slipping away, um, and it looks like a redeploy on Lithcorp Central has made the save by the, uh, the new conglomerate as well. Yeah, they got a galaxy set up, and it looks like the spawn sunder option's been picked off. Yep, and, and with maxes, okay. Deep core is the next base that's potentially up for contention. Oh, okay, the Vanu Sovereignties, they've got air support, uh, ground pounding. Uh, good air control, it really, really helps into the nature of the capture point being outside in the open. But with 90 seconds to go, you could say that the, the force that redeployed in Lithcorp Central can spawn over to the Lith Geolab because it's it's technically close enough. The fighting in the north, the population numbers have moved to Deserted Mineshaft, but Deserted Mineshaft is not ticking down. A really cunning Vanu Sovereignty guy could totally go to Soltec charging station, flip that back, and get the momentum back in their favor. The VS do hold McCullough Cart Mining. I'm waiting to see if the NC can kind of drop in here and... Uh and take this back. It's a minute 14 remaining. Two galaxy drops and a, a well-placed uh, spawn sunder for the VS or what's holding them on here. Ooh, full squad drop on the deep core deal lab. That's pretty freaking brutal. Full squad on the capture point at deep core deal lab. They're, the Vanu Sovereignty is trying to rally to get back on it, but it doesn't look like it's enough. And This is happening a number of times. I mean, if you're the Vanu Sovereignty, Heck, maybe leave some C4 on the capture point. Something to, to give yourself an advantage, because every time it's just the NC brings in a full galaxy drops and then just wipes you off. 
it's really funny because you see it work and a lot of people complain and then you see it not work and then no one complains but i mean that's the trick you have to set up and think about what your other team's gonna do i've we played service smash a lot and we cast a lot and we noticed that generally what happens is one side will repeat the same tactic over and over again and the trick is to figure out what they're doing and get ready for it Right, I mean, there's strategic play, which is what the force commanders are doing right now. They're just kind of the, the wider play. And then you've got your platoon leaders or your squad leaders who have to do the mission on the ground, and that's the tactical level of play, how you actually go about doing it. And it's normally that's where server smashes are won or lost. The tactical play from the force commanders is usually quite sound, and normally mistakes aren't really made. It's just how you attack a base, what kind of multipliers you bring, what kind of vehicles you do, how do you leapfrog to the next base if necessary, how do you redeploy and save, how do you break the will and spirit of the enemy. And that all comes down to your squad leaders and platoon leaders. It can be very hard for Force Commander to do that mid-game because they really, a lot of times, spend so much time in the map they can't really see what the enemy's doing to them unless they get field reports. Communication's a serious problem. And a lot of times it ends up just being briefings afterwards or watching videos to see what happens. That's actually what Emerald did in order to take down Briggs. They actually looked at what Briggs would do. And what Briggs would do is they'd send in a small force to come in one direction right before a base was going to be capped. This is how they would save it. So the small force coming in one direction to turn everyone around and then spawn everybody in their little defensive spawn and come in behind you and wipe you out. So the way Emerald de dealt with this is that for any base they actually wanted to take, they would send their air force there ahead of time waiting for that action and have them bomb the living crap out of the spawn room while the uh, Briggs was trying to execute. If you come to Deserted Mineshaft, we've got a defense of the Alamo here. Uh, the new conglomerate forces are surrounded and oh, they got a bit, little bit of population though. Um, on the capture point, plenty of maxes, I can't at least four or five on the surrounding area. I'm not really yeah, seeing. It out earlier here, man. It's a good fight. It's, it's a bit of a messy push by the. Now, a couple of maxes. Yeah, see the Vanu Sovereignty Forces, they're trying to counter push, they've brought their own maxes, but they're not supported. When you push, typically, and this is goes back to that tactical play, you push with EMP grenades and you push with like either flashbangs or uh, frag grenades or anti-vehicle grenades all in one go. And it's very kind of staggered. That is 101. And if anything, the new conglomerate is bringing in reinforcements. Check that reinforcements coming in from the east side, they're coming in from their spawn sundra. And this is going to guarantee them the base if they get up to that capture point, which looks like they will. Uh-oh, tempo's starting to shift. Oh, AV mines for the new uh, the Vanu Sovereignty. On the doorway, it hasn't actually been triggered yet. Okay, the gap... Oh, it's been cleared. A points only got one scat max covering. Another max comes in. It's not going to be enough. It looks like vanu has got it overrun, and the point is going to flip. Oh, my God. Got heal grenades down. A little zombie incursion, but I don't think that's going to be too much for the turrets that are set up. And here comes the VS again, uh, pushing into the tech plant, pushing into deep core geo, and pushing into, li into lift corp. It's not over at Desert Mineshaft because the spawn sunder is still up. They got pushed off. Now a, a battle sunder is coming. He's going to go on the AV mine. Oh, he just saw it the last moment. They're picking them off. But he's not picked off the ones immediately adjacent to him. He can't get into the spawn sundra. That's a lot of AV mines. All right, now he has to take it off. But this Raven Max is fighting on. They know the sundra's there. The sundra's smoking. He's run off. Spawn sundra's been saved. Capture points back in the hand of NC. They came back hard with maxes and oh fresh God, consumables. And it shows the level of the estimate for the, NC, the VS, they had to go for the cap point first before they went for the spawn option. And they've got Battle Sunders reversing it, I don't know why you're reversing anywhere, that was fixed. The rear of the Sunder doesn't do anything, uh, and more than the front, but 10 seconds to go, I don't see how they're going to get in here. And this is right as the momentum was leaning a little bit towards the VS. The VS were pushing it a lot of other places, but now suddenly you're going to have the NC with these two connections, uh, Stone Ridge Reserve and uh, Westwood Hills Air Dock. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a more juicy basis that they can capture. <laughs> Did you, look at Silver Valley Arsenal, it's 4,000 minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, your burglar right alarm. <laughs> oh, oh. Our admins can change those uh, timers so it works really well for policing. 4,000 hours to go on that capture, boys. <laughs> oh, my I fun win. toys. A, a fun time so the tech plant is being contested by the Vanu Sovereignty. So they got Mikala Kart Mining, which is great for them, and the Rock Slide Outlook is ticking down, also positive for them. Tech plant. 
It looks like it's gonna go. Uh, the north of southwest gate is gonna be safe. Right underneath the ape point on the tech plan. I'll come over there and have a look. We can confirm, guys, that VS have cheated bastards. No, no, it's fine. It was one guy. So anyway, you you saved it. It's all good. I'm at the tech plant with you, and we can see, yeah, the spawn thunder on the south side. The deployed one underneath is gone. They don't have any hard spawns. The NC pulled a sunderer right underneath the A point on the tech plant. Nice clutch deployed sunderer, but like four people spawned on it. They didn't really make good use of it. Looks like they got another one incoming, but they need somebody to tell them what they're about to expect. It is the goons. You think they hear that squad chat? The Wait, what? The NC are actually taking A? It's got to be an infiltrate. Yes, yeah, light assault on the capture point on the gun side. Uh, there's a fury harasser on the bridgeway. <laughs> light assault sees him from behind. Is he going to go and try and see for him? Not quite. And point with two people. Oh, this is interesting. They've got twin Valkyries allowing them to spawn in on the balcony, but it's incredibly fragile. One's burning. This is a tenuous hold if ever you saw one by the Vine of Sovereignty. It really. Okay, now they've got another Sunder in the VB area, but... I, I don't know, I mean, I see this harasser up here with the Fury, and... Is the PPA that bad now that a PPA wouldn't serve them better right, right here? <laughs> I know it's bad, guys, but come on. Sometimes you just gotta bring Fury. Got more Valkyries just incoming left and right. These guys are not... They don't, they don't care how fragile they are. They're cheap to pull, and they're gonna keep pulling. It's another Sunder just GSD in. Oh, he has to contend with the Raven Max. Oof! That AV Max from the NC is absolutely brutal. He's gonna walk over an AV mine. Ha ha! Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! The AV mine wins! <laughs> oh, he's getting rezzed by a friendly medic though, but it's, it's nice to see and catch it on stream. That pizza delivery came cold. Uh, VS are about to capture Deepcore Geolab and are pushing. Oh, they were pushing back into the deserted mineshaft. But Rock Slide and Deepcore are two things that uh, the NC are definitely going to have to deal with here. And yeah, so. Oh, wow, you're right with the Deepcore and Rock Slide. It's this total shift of momentum. You're right. Even though the Western Lane kind of uh, was pushed back, we're at Rock Slide at the moment. 30 seconds to go. Squad of infantry of NC just dropped on the roof. A lot of dead markers for the Vanu Sovereignty. There's an AFK guy. Oh, that's criminal. He just got shot. Uh, beacon reinforcements for the Vanu Sovereignty. We've got a galaxy up top offering spawn options in. It's still very low numbers. Smoke's on the point. Vanu Sovereignty gets the capture point back. NC's got a motion. Closing in on the A point on deep core. They do not want to give this one up. Lots of dead Vanu on A point, but the A point is not flipping in. The Vanu have it. Nice recap. That's great. That saves Bastion. They need to get to Lithcorp Central, but that's good work. Although they're going to have to make a save on West Foot Air, um, Foothills Air Dock as well, and Stone Ridge. They, the fan of somebody really needs to get a cap on Deserted to prevent that going anywhere. Rock slide out. Look, five seconds. Rock slide. Four seconds. Three seconds to go on Rock Slide. They're, they're going to get it. Oh wait, no, can't from behind. No, they get it. There you go. Oh, it's good. I think McCall Tech Plan is going to be the next fight to watch. It's going straight up 50 50, though. Yep. They still got a uh, Battle Sun from the backside. The SCU is ticking down with four, 24 seconds to go. <laughs> the harasser on the balcony is still holding the balcony. Barely, but the angling on the rear is bad. Where's his buddies? Oh, the Max on the capture point is going to pick off the last guy. NC need to get a, uh, a Sunderer placed down in here so they can get an easier spawn to get up to that A point. Oh, and they, they did they not make the same mistake. They've had several Sunderers down there. The Vanu keep jumping on them and dropping mines down. Like the, that's like the fourth okay. NC Sunderer down underneath the A point I've watched explode. This one new conglomerate Max finally goes down on the capture point of the tech plant. He was absolutely wrecked.